Hostithia, da roper fair hoxithium, unitrit no que domino, sit sam peter na gloria, Tam si hit me no Open our Lord our mouths to bless your holy name, cleanse our hearts from vain, evil, distracting thoughts, enlighten our understanding, inflame our will, that we may worthily, attentively, devoutly spend this time in the presence of your divine majesty. On this day of prayer for religious and consecrated life, as we, our Lord Jesus was presented in the temple 40 days after the, his birth on Christmas, we remind, remind ourselves of the vows of our baptism and the days of our consecration, we present ourselves during this time of adoration. We pray for healing and strength for our sisters and brothers. We pray also for eternal rest for all the religious and consecrated women and men who have served with us and in Saskatchewan. We ask for eternal rest to the faithful departed. And we also pray for a new generation and young people to consider the call to consecrate their life to Jesus Christ. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Number 688 in the CBW3, 688. Tantum ergo sacramentum, venere mugenui, et anticum documentum, no voce dat ritsui, Prest et fides supplementum, sensum defectu vi. Genitori, genitorque. Doce denti habutroque, cam parsit laudat si o. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven, having all sweetness within him. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. 
Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. For the reposition, the Blessed Sacrament will sing, Holy God, we praise thy name.
if you'd like, uh, especially the children or anyone else, would like to come to the back of the church with your candles for the beginning of the liturgy. Or you can face backwards here. We'll light the candles. If we turn and face the back, and, uh, we're just waiting for a couple more candles to be lit. We all want to light our candles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exultation. So let us also, gathered together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Jesus Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again in glory. We pray. O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man Simeon in answer to his prayers, and you showed to him the light for revelation to the Gentile, we humbly ask you that you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessings all of these candles here lit, which we, eager, which we are eager to carry in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue we may reach the light which never fails. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now go to the house of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 394, verses 3, 4, and 5, in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 394.
brothers and sisters in Christ, in a, a very special way, I acknowledge and welcome our religious. Um, religious from across our diocese and also beyond are with us today. And it, it's wonderful on this uh, very special day in the life of the church, the Feast of the Presentation, to also acknowledge uh, religious and consecrated men and women who serve the body of Christ in a very powerful and special way as called by God. And so we now begin this liturgy with the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace to, to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds and hearts made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So we now hear from the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. the king of 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, should make the source of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, Here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since the children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that Jesus did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because Jesus himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, the child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the things I was doing before I was getting ready for this liturgy earlier today anyway was uh, I was writing up descriptors for four legs of a 40k run. Now why was I doing that? Well, there's a group of young men from our diocese that want to do a 40 kilometer Lenten run on the eve of Palm Sunday. They're calling it the Lenten 40. And uh, the Lenten 40 is actually being based on the four mysteries of the rosary. And uh, one of the mysteries, of course, uh, is the, 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 the luminous mysteries of the, um, the mysteries of the, uh, uh, that relate to the luminous mysteries is the transfiguration. And um, they asked me to write a couple of descriptors well, as I reflected on the luminous mysteries and the transfiguration, I found myself being very grateful for the liturgy I was about to celebrate this afternoon. Because it's one thing to say we are called to be like Christ, but what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, I'm now with a group of people who, uh, in a very particular way, as consecrated women and men, have heard the Holy Spirit's call to be transfigured in the likeness of Christ, to be on that journey as religious women and men. And I thank you for that, 
because amongst other things, you give a very concrete example and experience to many countless men and women and, and children um, about what it means to follow Christ, what it looks like. And very practically in the flesh, and not just individually, but communally, uh, religious communities are a, a mark of consecrated life for our world today. Many of you come with very interesting histories, and I'm now in my fifth year here in the diocese, I know this. Um, very briefly, I'd like to name the consecrated, uh, the, co the congregations who live consecrated life in our diocese. Um, the Sisters of Charity of Montreal, also known as the Grey Nuns. The Sisters of Charity of Immaculate Conception. The Franciscan Sisters of Saint Elizabeth. The Les Filles de la Providence. The Sisters of Loreto. The Missionary Apostles of Christ in the Eucharist. The Sisters of Mission Service. The Sisters of Notre Dame d'Avernier. The Sisters of the Presentation of Mary. The Sisters of Our Lady of the Cross uh, and the Sisters of St. Joseph. The Sisters of Our Lady of Zion. The Ursuline Sisters of Bruno. Uh, the Ursuline Sisters of St. Angela's Convent Prelate and the Verbum Dei Missionary Sisters. And amongst the Ukrainian rite, we have the Sisters of St. Joseph and the Sisters uh, uh, Servants of Mary Immaculate, Sisters of Mary Immaculate. But also amongst the men, we have a number. We have the Benedictines, uh, centered out of Munster. We have the Congregation of St. Basil. We have the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, who in many ways founded the diocese along with the Benedictines, the Society of African Missions, the Redemptress, the Vincentians, and the Fraternal Society of St. Peter. So those are religious societies and institutes that make up our diocese. We also have, I, I'm aware of a few, members from outside our diocese who are with us today. Hope she doesn't mind, but I highlight Sister Margaret Baudet. From, she's in the Northwest Territory, has been there almost 40 years. Um, Sister of St. Joseph of London, I believe. And uh, she is with us today. And others, I acknowledge, uh, if, if I don't know that you're here. You know, our readings are very, very powerful to help us celebrate this day. You know, the Old Testament reading, the prophet Malachi, the prophet is dealing with um, the need to speak and be reminded about what it means to be a faithful follower of God, of Yahweh. Because the people in their cycle, in their life, had become hard-hearted and even cynical in his time. You know, nothing new under the midnight sun. And so God raises up the prophet Malachi to call leaders and people back into relationship with God, which will affect everything in their life. And so the major themes of his message, God affirms and declares his consistent and unwavering commitment, his love for all his people. He affirms the responsibility of leaders in the community. Priests are to be good priests and make acceptable sacrifices. Political and social leaders are to walk with God and provide good instruction and care of the people. They are actually also to practice spiritual disciplines and be renewed in these, like good character, repentance, works that refresh the heart and soul. And above all, they are to kindle hope. In uh, the second reading, Hebrews, that we heard, Jesus is radically identified with humanity. He has become like his brothers and sisters in every respect except for sinfulness. And he not only shows, albeit him sinless, the way of repentance, but he is the ultimate one, the priest, who makes the ultimate atonement. And so thus we can say his light, the light, has indeed conquered the darkness. These scriptures are powerful for all of the people of God, but they have a special significance for consecrated persons. I mean, the prophet Malachi himself 
uh, in his message and in his themes, gives a strong directive that would be typical of the mission and identity of most of our religious communities. And of course, the prophet, the, uh, the letter of Hebrews reminds us that we must always be in solidarity with Christ. I, I remember, I think it was about a year or maybe it was two years ago, Pope Francis spoke uh, uh, at one of these uh, masses, these themes, and he highlighted the fact that religious communities today, there's so much demanded and there's so much work. And there's very good work to do, holy work to do. It can overwhelm. But he also reminded that work must always be secondary to um, the priority of union with Christ, which isn't just a personal relationship, but something that communities do together in Christ. And that this priority will be the way in which we're not just limited to carrying out our identity and mission on paper or through merely a plan, but we are always open to the priority of the hand of God leading us. You know, I must say I enjoy the early stories of the Oblates, and I know they've been challenged in many ways, but I heard these stories in the north as well as here in Saskatoon. And the Oblates were very capable men. They had all sorts of carpenters and planners, and boy, could they build and be innovative. But uh, their priority was to hear the urge of God through the Holy Spirit and then go and actually make the plan on the way. (laughs) Um, Something that uh, is a little tougher to do these days, but maybe it shouldn't be. We always need to remember the priority of God's will and the working of the Holy Spirit over our best laid plans. Of course, our plans are important. And as I hear about the founders of the religious communities of women in this diocese, I hear and see the same thing. What do they remind us and show us about works and acts of God, not merely works and acts of people? And so, consecrated women and men, thank you for what you uniquely show us about the works and acts of God. And you continue to do this. Many of you are elderly, and uh, last year I know we highlighted this, I highlighted it again, that um, you might be looking back at what seemed to be greater days, days when numbers were bigger and the works that your communities carried out were more obvious. And some of you are maybe, as you would say, coming towards the sunset of your particular community. But what you sow is fruitful. And whether you carry on in your particular consecrated community or this gives new life to other ways in which the Holy Spirit works in the diocese, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need you so much and we hold you up today for the radical and needed gift you are to God's plan and the people of God here in Saskatoon and beyond. And so may the Lord bless you on this day in which we celebrate the presentation of the Lord. And going back to my introduction, thank you for also showing us what it means to celebrate something in the luminous mysteries. We are called to be transfigured like Christ. And thank you for showing us what it means to be bold and going forward on the journey of the transfiguration in the one Lord of the universe. I'll invite the, all the religious and consecrated women and men to stand. We're going to have a renewal of the vows. So I ask you uh, to, re- to respond with the phrase, I am, if you will, to the following uh, questions or invocations. Consecrated sisters and brothers, Are you resolved to persevere to the end of your days in the holy state of consecrated life and in the service of God and his church? 
Are you so resolved to follow Christ in the spirit of the gospel that your whole life may be a faithful witness to God's love and a convincing sign of the kingdom? Are you resolved to renew your vows of solemn consecration to our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I am. Thanks be to God. Lord, hear the prayers of your church. Look with favor on these your servants, whom you have called and continue to call in your love. Set them on the way of eternal salvation. May they seek only what is pleasing to you and fulfill it with watchful care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So please stand and we'll have now the prayers of the faithful. And now we bring before God our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Bishop Mark, for all their intentions, and that together with our shepherds, we may live out faithfully the vows of our baptism, presenting the light of Christ and the joy of the gospel to our world. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour tous ceux qui sont malades et qui souffrent, pour leur guérison, pour leur force, par l'intercession de Saint Joseph et de la Sainte Vierge Marie, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the consecrated, for religious men, women and men, on this the celebration of the presentation of the Lord. May they be strengthened in their vocation to consecrate their life each day to God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour des vocations à la vie religieuse et consacrée, afin que les jeunes, hommes et femmes, répondent à l'appel de donner leur vie comme témoin de l'amour du Christ pour son épouse, l'Église, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for the religious and consecrated women and men who have served the church, for all our loved ones, grant them eternal rest at the wedding feast of the Lamb. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, source of all blessings, hear all our prayers spoken and known by you in the depths of our hearts. And we make these prayers with Mary, our mother, in Christ our Lord. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 471 in the CBW, number 471. Go ahead, guys.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the May the offering made with exaltation by your grace be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, for you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation. And with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance in your life, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints of his constant intercession, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always with your spirit. And we share with each other a sign of that peace. Peace, 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 peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the, the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us conclude our prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death, until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain his gift of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Oh. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all those who made this celebration possible. Thank you to Bishop Mark for presiding this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you, Father Gerard and Holy Family Parish for welcoming us here today. Thank you, Father Jeffrey, for all the liturgical preparations. A big thank you to those who helped with the music ministry. Thank you also to the readers, altar servers, and all those who contributed to the Mass. Thank you to the Diocese of Saskatoon Catholic Foundation for the donation towards the meal that we will be having soon. Thank you to the CWL for their help setting up and serving the meal. Thank you to all the members of the Sisters Association of the Diocese and all those who worked to make this day possible. And thank you all for coming to this celebration of the Feast of the Presentation of Jesus to celebrate consecrated life and to pray for vocations in our diocese. We greatly appreciate your presence, prayers, and support. After Mass, you are all, everyone here is invited for lunch in the hall. And Bishop Mark, would you like to say grace for us? Oh, sure, we'll get, we might as well get grace done Thank now. You. Well, let us pray. Almighty God, we give you praise and thanks for not only this celebration, but what continues following this Eucharist in terms of sharing a meal and fellowship together. And on this special day, we thank you for the blessing of consecrated life in our diocese and in our church. We thank you for the food we're about to eat and the fellowship we share in Christ our Lord. Amen. Really good to celebrate with you all today, especially our consecrated women and men, and look forward to the celebration continuing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of God Almighty be with you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we go in the peace and light of Christ. Please join us in our recessional hymn in the glory and praise number 717 Thanks, in the glory and praise 717. <laughs> Blessed are you, the lowly one. 
Draw you to God's care, for with